The next thing I'd like to cover is the concept of type 1 and type 2 errors. This is because part of what we are doing when we conduct a null hypothesis statistical test is that we are attempting to make a decision about reality. And any time we put ourselves in such a situation, there's a chance we could make a mistake. We might end up with the wrong conclusion. Okay, all right, so let's do type 1, type 2 errors. Okay, so you may have heard these terms. These are the idea of, of false positives and false negatives. So you may have heard of these terms before, okay? That's essentially what we're talking about with type 1 and type 2 errors, all right? So what we need to do is we sort of need to describe reality in a couple of, of, of specific ways here. So, um, so the first scenario is the following. So what we're going to do is we're going to say scenario one, we have a null hypothesis. Okay. So we have a null hypothesis. And it, so the question is, we're making a decision about that null hypothesis, but in the real world, that null hypothesis could be true or the null hypothesis could be false. Right, so those are the two versions of reality that we have. Okay, the null is true or the null isn't. Now, we have two decisions that we can make. The first decision is that we fail to reject the null. Okay, that's decision number one. Decision number two is when we actually reject the null. We say, no, nope, the values are too small. Um, it's the, what, what we're observing is too unlikely to have occurred by chance, or however we look at it, the idea is we're going to reject the null. All right, so let's just make sure we've got a clear understanding of, of the scenario we're talking about here. So we have, we have two versions of reality. We have two versions of reality where the null is true and the null is false, okay? And we can make two specific decisions. We have two possibilities here. All right, so scenario one is that the null hypothesis is true and we can decide to reject the null or fail to reject, or the null hypothesis can be false and again, we have a decision to fail to reject or not. So this is reality. So if I kind of want to think about it this way, if I, if I sort of circle this up here, this is, this is reality up here. Right, so this is reality. Okay, whereas this is our decision for what we're going to do in the world. All right, so let's do the following. I'm going to say... Let's work with temporarily for, our, for argument's sake. Let's say that the, my null hypothesis is that I'm going skydiving and my parachute, my parachute will work. That's my null hypothesis. Okay. So I believe when I jump that the parachute is going to work. Now, in reality, two things could happen. The parachute could work, or unfortunately, the parachute might not work. So, um, so here's a situation where let's think this through. If my parachute works, if in, tr in truth my parachute is work and I fail to reject the null, that means I essentially accept this. Now, what does that mean in, in reality? What well, means if I'm going skydiving and I believe this to be true and I'm not rejecting this, then in that case, I'm kind of accepting it which means I sort of end up in a situation where I go skydiving, okay? And I have a good time and everybody's safe and happy and I land back on the ground perfectly fine, okay? Now, let's think about this scenario. So if for some reason I start to think, you know what, my parachute, there's something wrong with my parachute and I actually don't believe this to be true, in that case, I'm gonna reject this, and if reality is that my parachute is, is faulty in some way and I reject it, I'm not going to go skydiving. So 
I may not be happy in the sense that I, I didn't have a very good um, time from a, an adventure seeking or a thrill seeking perspective, but I think I'd still argue that I'm happy that I'm still alive. So in these two scenarios, no error has actually been made. So these are not, these are not error situations. These are, are, are correct decisions. The null hypothesis was false and I rejected it. That's what you want to do with something that's false. Oops, I'm making marks all over everything here. Whereas if the null hypothesis is true, I, I don't want to reject it. Now, it's not the same thing as saying, it's not the same thing as putting an affirmative stamp and saying it is true, but it's not rejecting it. Okay. Now let's think about this one. So let's think about the type one error first. So let's think about the type one error. So this is the type one error up here. A type one error can only happen if the null is true, but I reject it. If the null is true, but I reject it. So let's think this through. If the null is true, that means my parachute will work, which means it's perfectly safe to me, for me to jump. If I reject the claim that my parachute is going to work, then I'm actually not going to jump. But the truth is, had I jumped, everything would have been fine. Now, I may not have had a fun time. I did make an error, but this error wasn't sort of, that error was sort of like, yeah, it, it was what it was, okay? So my error was neither, the key here is my error, error wasn't fatal. I hope you see that that's very different if you end up making a type two error. A type two error has very, very, very different consequences. Does everyone see, can, can you see why that's the case? If the null is false, meaning my parachute is not going to work, and I fail to reject it, meaning I jump with the faulty parachute, well, that's not a good situation. Okay. So these are the types of situations that we can encounter. These are the scenarios that we encounter when we're um, working with null hypothesis tests. So a type one error is a situation where the null is actually true. So you believe the claim is true. You tempor temporarily work with the null and then you reject the null, which seems to suggest your claim is true when in, in truth it actually wasn't because the null was true. That's a type one error. The type two error is going in the other direction. When you, when you fail to reject the null hypothesis, and in truth, the null hypothesis is actually false. Now, depending on how you construct your situation, it might be the case that a type one or a type two error, so the way I've drawn it here, type two errors are not always the fatal error. So there are times when you actually might have them in the wrong direction, or, or the, the, the consequences might go, the more extreme consequences might be for a type one error instead of a type two error, in which case what we do is we'll work to then keep this small. Now, one of the things to note is Here's what we can say, the probability, the probability of making a type one error if the null is true, that probability is what we call the significance level. That's what we actually call alpha. So that's where the idea of alpha comes into play with, with our, our <clears throat> um, with the null hypothesis statistical tests.